is the GIS News Hour for Thursday, 9th February 2012. I am Betty and Lazarus. In the headlines, Airports Authority Chairman confirms major airlines have begun paying into an escrow account for Taiwan. Beacon Insurance Company boasts of assets in excess of $370 million. And OECS Tourism Ministers discuss solutions to aviation challenges in the region. Details are next. It's a 2012 Carico Carnival sponsored by Digicel. Come experience the energy of kayak mass and the unique Shakespeare mass tradition from February 17th to 21st, 2012. On Friday, February 17th, it's the Calypso Finals and Canboulé at the Hillsborough Recreational Ground from 9pm. On Saturday, February 18th, the ladies show off their beauty at the annual Carico Carnival Queen Show from 9pm. On Sunday, February 19th, it's the Soka Monarch Finals from 9 p.m. at the Hillsborough Recreational Grounds. On Monday, February 20th, it's Jump Up Through the Streets of Hillsborough with the annual Juve from 5 a.m. The King and Queen of the Band Pageant at the Hillsborough Recreational Ground from 4 p.m. And find yourself in a band from 9 p.m. for the Monday Night Mass Parade from the Lauriston Airport to Hillsborough. On Tuesday, February 21st, it's Lat Slap Jump Up. From 6 a.m., it's Leicester Juve Through the Streets of Leicester. From 10 a.m., the Indigenous Shakespeare Mass through Mount Royal, Six Roads, Brunswick and Hillsborough. From 3 p.m. the parade of the bands through the streets of Hillsborough. From 9 p.m. you get to choose with the People's Choice Soka Monarch by the Jupa in Hillsborough. It's a 2012 Carry Con Carnival sponsored by Digicel. More mass, more energy, more culturalism for all. Welcome back. Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Grenada Airports Authority, Rodney George, has confirmed that a number of major airlines have already begun paying into an escrow account for Taiwan. Taiwan has taken action against a government which it owes millions of dollars from past loans. Mr. George spoke with the Government Information Service on Tuesday. Mr. George, can you verify reports that a number of major airlines have already begun paying monies owing to Grenada into an account on behalf of Taiwan? Yes, that is, that is correct. Um, actually, it's uh, Virgin, British Airways, um, and Delta. American Airlines have been served, but they're not, uh, they haven't started paying into the um, escrow account as yet. So where does that put operations at the Morris Bishop International Airport? Well, of course, that puts us in a very precarious position because uh, our revenues have been essentially cut off. As of today, um, it's close, just a little over half a million U.S. dollars that has been uh, sequestered. Um, and if we take into account what's due to us from America, and that could rise to something like 800,000 U.S., so you can very well imagine that with uh, revenues cut off, um, it puts us in a very, very difficult situation. Certainly, the Grenada Airports Authority would be in discussions with government as to the way forward and how the situation will be handled. What can you say? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have uh, had conversations um, with the Attorney General's Department um, because they're, they're, I guess, looking at uh, the legal angle. Um, as a way to solve this and we've also been in discussion with the Ministry of Finance and of course our line minister, Minister David, he's been informed and I know he has been uh, working behind the scenes also to, um, to help solve this situation. So, so, gov so government, government is, is, is surely uh, aware of um, the gravity of the situation. How speedily do you think a resolution can be reached and what would be the steps taken or 
how would survival mode come into effect at the yeah well i mean uh, as you must appreciate this is this is something that um we have no control over i mean uh, it's 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 something totally external to us although we're we're feeling the effects of it um i want to be a little bit um optimistic and hope that uh, that the government will will find a way to solve it and in the meantime meantime um we need funds to operate so uh, i i suppose um uh, the government is, is is probably maybe i'm speculating a little bit here but um Hopefully, they're thinking of ways to, to fund us in the in the in the interim period while this um, while this is being sorted out, um, and and really that's the best we can we can hope for. But um, I, I should underline that it's a serious situation. Um, if we have no revenues, then uh, we can't service our debt, we can't pay salaries, and we can't uh, operate the airport. So. Um, I am taking the optimistic view that uh, that this will be solved. In the meantime, the uh, our CEO and his management team they're working feverishly, talking to our creditors, um, trying to uh, you know rearrange payments, etc. So we're doing anything we can do on our part to um, to help ameliorate the situation. That's Rodney George, chairman of the board of directors of the Grenada Airports Authority. Increased client confidence in the Beacon Insurance Company has resulted in an increase in underwriting from two to ten million dollars. The company also has assets in excess of three hundred and seventy million dollars and a premium income of more than two hundred and eighty million dollars. This was revealed during the company's brand launch at the Grenada Trade Center Annex on Thursday. Branch manager Molly Roberts says while the last few years have been marked by a painful recession that has affected all sectors, her company used the opportunity to operate more efficiently and more in keeping with the needs and expectations of clients. She says the exercise represents renewal and refocus and keeping people at the core of their services. We have used our, we have used our years as of Caribbean experience to tweak our services so that people can find more innovative and affordable ways of full coverage for themselves, their families, and their properties. And during this time, we have expanded, not shrink our outreach in the community which we serve. We have refocused. In the process, we have witnessed increased client confidence in the local operations of Beacon, which has gone from underwriting two million to 10 million. We have combined professional quality insurance services with dependable and trustworthy corporate citizenship. Quality, dependability, and trustworthiness remain at the core of what we all do at the Beacon. Evidence of this emphasis can be seen in our new corporate headquarters at Morris Bishop Highway that has provided a better ease that has provided a better ease to our customers in their interaction with us while we stay true to the new environment friendly standards. Chairman of the Board of Directors Gerard Hadid describes the launch as a symbol of renewed commitment to go above and beyond for customers and a pledge to exceed their expectations. In 2006, you will not believe it, because of how we manage our, our claims here in Grenada, our premium income grew 40%. People got to understand and know this company is a reputable company and has done every single thing to satisfy its customer base. Our growth has been fueled by the same passion for excellence in service and professionalism that drove my father. It was executed by employees who, who delight in going the extra mile for their clients. It was built on a platform that combined technology with a genuine caring for the needs of both employees and customers. So ladies and gentlemen, the question may, you may be asking yourself is, why now? Well, you have my word that we will remain 
true to our guiding principles, but in addition, we pledge to keep in touch with you and your needs, to be on the cutting edge of technology, to go the extra mile for you, maintain the first class, maintain first class reinsurance arrangements, but beyond all of this, it is our mission to provide you with a life transforming experience through our compassionate delivery of service. Deputy Chairman Robert Mauser is confident that under the new branding, Beacon will become an even greater force to be reckoned with. For him, employees are important to the company. No company runs without its employees. There is no company that I know of that doesn't require and the foundation of it is not its employees. So we looked at our employees, we looked at the structure, we looked at the compensation packages, we looked at the responsibilities as outlined and we went through the entire organization to make sure that all the jobs were properly categorized, that they were within a very transparent benchmark within the industry where we chose to compensate our staff. We then created a career path whereby the beacon, um, I think from the early days of Mr. Aziz Hadid, um, always supported the um, training of its staff and we formalized such a training whereby all staff within the beacon are encouraged to pursue professional qualifications. The professional qualifications are then translated into um, a very defined path that you move through the organization within a particular band of under, whether it be underwriters, claims technicians, um, your responsibility, your package, everything moves with years of experience which we do not discount either as well as your, your personal qualifications. So we created this, this um, concept called the Beacon Career Path, which has been very, very successful, and we have, we have produced a, a, a large number of qualified individuals within the Beacon, and we've also interested young personnel as they join the Beacon to embark on a career path with us as they can see exactly how it translates into their own lifestyle. Garfin Director Angus Smith spoke briefly about the new Insurance Act, which was passed in March 2010. He says the new act has strengthened the supervision and regulation of insurance companies, bringing them in line with modern standards. The financial and prudential requirements were, were strengthened significantly. significantly. Capital requirements for companies um, increased to $2 million. That's um, capital requirements for a local company was increased from, I think it was 500,000 to 2 million, and for foreign companies from 3 million to $5 million. Um, solvency requirements were also significantly increased, and solvency is the excess of assets over liabilities that you're supposed to maintain. Those were increased um, significantly, or the formula was changed slightly. Most importantly, one of the key functions of the new act was the requirement now for insurance companies to maintain insurance funds. These funds are where you set aside assets equivalent to your insurance liabilities. In the, in the event of the demise of a company, and those, those assets are required to be placed in trust and pledged to the regulator. So in the event of the demise of a company, you would have the liquidator or receiver or whoever would have assets available to, to satisfy the insurance liabilities. That is a critical provision of the new fund. Let me say that we have been working assiduously with all the companies in the last two years and we are now well over 90% of liabilities in Grenada covered by assets and pledged to Grenada. There's still a few companies that are not fully covered as yet and we're working with them but we have made significant progress there, and um, which, is, which is significantly good for, for Grenada. Grenada could benefit from financial resources under the Global Environment Facility, GEF, small grants program during its fifth programming cycle. A startup mission will be in the country next week to determine its readiness to manage the facility. 
The Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program is supported by the United Nations. The program was launched in 1992 to solve environment problems throughout local action. The GEF focuses on ensuring that money is available to member countries for national activities. Mrs. Faye Thompson, UNDP Program Coordinator, says the new mod modality will result in Grenada having its own country office and staff. In the past, a small grants program was coordinated as part of a regional program operating from an office in Barbados. What this mission is, is seeking to do is to ascertain the conditions in Grenada for hosting the, the program nationally. In the past, the, pro, the, the small grants program was coordinated out of a sub-regional office in Barbados. And the emphasis now is on removing that, that mechanism and replacing it with a local country-driven program which would see its own office in country with its own staff. So it, in a sense, the program is helping to build capacity in country to manage its own affairs. And so this startup mission is geared towards assessing the conditions that we have here in Grenada, and once everything is in order, to implement in the local, a local programming. Thompson says the visiting team will meet with officials in the Ministry of Finance and other sectors. The delegation will be headed by Mrs. Angelica Shamarina, Program Advisor of the Global Environment Facility Small Grants Program. The Global Environment Facility Program is coordinated through the United Nations Development Program in Grenada. And the official focal point for that is the Ministry of Finance and the Permanent Secretary in particular. So that will be one of the crucial meetings that they will have with the official focal point. But because that's, um, the, the entity that coordinates the work is the Economic and Technical Cooperation Unit, which is headed by Mr. Mervyn Hain as director. And so the mission will meet with Mr. Haynes and his staff to discuss the operations as well. Ministers of Tourism and Civil Aviation across the Eastern Caribbean met in St. Vincent on Thursday to discuss and devise strategic solutions to tourism and aviation issues and challenges currently confronting the sub-region. The meeting reflects the high priority that regional leaders continue to place on airlift issues. The joint meeting was in response to a decision taken at the OECS Council of Tourism Ministers and subsequently endorsed by the OECS Authority in May last year. The purpose was to address matters geared towards improving the attractiveness of the OECS airspace and accessibility of destinations in order to increase air passenger traffic in the region. The ministers were expected to identify priority areas for joint action, including the development of a common OECS air transport policy and the preparation of airlift capacity studies to access the air service needs of the region. We'll be back after this break. Want to save on the cost of posting? Grenada Postal Corporation is the answer. We offer convenience, online tracking, reliability, on time delivery, and of course, unbeatable prices on express parcels and registered mailing. Ask about your online visa application and notification by email service. Grenada Postal Corporation, a member of the UPU, the world's oldest network. Send, receive, delivered. Sometimes, the simplest joys in life can be the most rewarding. For quality sexual and reproductive health care services, make the GPPA your next stop. 
visit our offices at St. George's and Grenville. Call 440-3341 or 442-5442 for more information. The Grenada Planned Parenthood Association, promoting healthy living. Welcome back. Grenadians nationwide have been commended for their display of patriotism and their participation in the one-month celebration of the 30th anniversary of independence. Culture Minister S Senator Ali Gill describes it as a commendable demonstration of love for the nation from young and old and from people across different socio-economic and political strata. The events were spearheaded by the National Celebrations Committee, headed by Assistant Commissioner of Police Smith Roberts. Among the innovations of the National Independence Committee was the inauguration of a Prime Minister's Best Village competition. Participating villages were judged in the areas of culture, food and the environment, which Peter Martinick emerged as overall winner. Also, a first this year was the hosting of a parish day in each parish, including Kariku and Petit Martinique. The theme of the independence celebration was breaking all barriers, striving for greater achievements under one flag. Independence Day on Tuesday was marked by a cultural pageant and military parade at the National Stadium. It was followed by a firework display from Fort Frederick, as well as cultural entertainment on the carnage from Republic Bank Angel Harp Steel Orchestra and the Royal Grenada Police Force Band. Secondary students in the Tri-Island have been showing off their knowledge in business through the 2012 Junior Achievement Open House Program. Two schools in Karakou and Petit Martinique staged their exercise on Monday and three from St. Andrew held theirs on Thursday. Eleven participating schools in St. George's will meet at the GBSS Auditorium for final leg on Monday. Junior Achievement was started in 1986, is run by the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. It gives students the opportunity to learn how to open a small business, plan, manage, operate and then liquidate it. JA coordinator Jesse Cumberbatch says the idea is to create entrepreneurship among the third and fourth form students of secondary schools. We want to, to create that entrepreneurial culture, of course, and that entrepreneurial spirit, of course. Um, they really and truly start a business. Of course, what is what they would have learned in the classroom is just the practical side of it. We want them to learn how to operate their business. Planning up, of course, they have to do a business plan. This whole program is being judged. So from business plan right on to the end, they have to do an annual report. So they will understand really and truly the basics of running their business. We will expect at least one or two persons at the end of the day to want to start their businesses. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, the same ideas that they would have had for the Junior Achievement Program, they could, at the end of the day, start businesses, that same business. As a motivation to the students, Cumberbatch says they have the opportunity to enter the Junior Achievement of the Americas competition, which allows them to showcase their company. They have already been to Argentina and Brazil. We encourage the, person, the students, the winning company, the company that wins, we will try our best to get you to enter this competition. Right, right, and right. it is from all the winners, the, all the winners from the Caribbean and the Americas come together in this competition. So when you go, you have to showcase your product, you have to go through the whole works, you have to do the annual report presentation in front of all these judges, you have to have a trade fair where you display, you sell, you market, everything. You have to go through everything. So we expose you to that, you have that exposure, you have you can have up to eight persons going as long as we find the funding and of course it's it's a motivation for the teachers as well because the teachers get an opportunity to go junior achievers committee member stephen jerome says the program is an important aspect of character building and should be mandatory in all secondary schools at first you have to um you know there are shares offered and the, the students um, and the officers go around and sell shares, and shares, mm -hmm. shares, actual shares. In fact, um, that was, you know, that was one of the ways I got involved in, in, in being a volunteer with the Junior Achievement Committee. 
because my daughter, she's past um, past student of the junior achievement, and um, you know, one day she came and said, "Daddy, can you buy some shares, you know, for a company?" <laughs> You know, so I said, you know, what's that? You know, so she said, well, you know, it's junior achievement. You know, so I, or finally, I just said, yeah, give me about 15 shares. You know, not thinking, I, you know, I didn't think it was they were serious about it. And then when she at five dollars, you know, and then she came to collect money, and she said, no, actually, you know, you have to buy your shares, and you know, so um, it poked my interest, and um, you know, from then on, you know, I thought it was an extremely um, important program, um, which I think you know should be made mandatory you know, in, in, in the secondary schools. The Junior Achievement Program runs from September to May. In the region, trade between the organization of Eastern Caribbean states themselves is practically non-existent, with most sub-regional exports going to markets outside of the grouping. This was the stock situation painted by Virginia Paul, head of the OECS Trade Policy Desk based in Castries, St. Lucia. Paul noted that the OECS imports from Trinidad and Tobago are significant, exceeding a quarter of a billion U.S. dollars annually. Petroleum products account for some 45% of Trinidad and Tobago's exports to the sub-region. All OECS states show a negative balance of trade in manufactured products, but the sub-region enjoys a surplus of trade in services. When we return, Trevor Twaits will be up next with all the sporting developments. would be easy that I would make a lot of money. You said no one would ever suspect me of trafficking drugs. You never said if I got caught I could go to jail for up to 15 years. You never said my children would grow up without me and my parents could die before I got out of jail. You made me lie to my family. You said it was easy money for me and my children. You helped me put drugs inside my body. You never said if one of the bags in my stomach burst I could die. You have a choice. Don't be anyone's drug mule. Sponsored by the Government of Grenada and the European Union. Telephone 4407911. Grenada. Grenada. It's coming. $150,000. 10,000 fans. 200 players. Six teams. One league. Coming. March 2012. Our game. Our people. Our time. Has come. The Grenada Super League. Organizers are promising plenty of thrill and excitement at the National Relay Meeting next weekend. Teams are warming to the Walter St. John St. George's 2020 competition. The National Secondary Schools Under-15 tournament is set to be unearthing new cricket talent. These and more are in this edition of the GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. Organizers are promising plenty of thrill and excitement at the National Relay Meeting next week Saturday at the National Stadium. Athletes from the top schools and clubs are competing in the 15th edition of the event, sponsored for the very first time by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Senior athletic coach in the Department of Sports, Conrad Francis, is directing the meeting. The Relay Meet is a very exciting event. Um, it is full of fun and enjoyment. Um, the athletes themselves enjoy it, enjoy it more, and it is a spectator-friendly friendly event. Um, spectators like to see really running, you know, it's, 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 it's speed, speed and, and, and the passing of the battle. So it's full of thrills, you know, some battle falls, some mess of the battle, all that, you know, uh, enthralls the, 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 the spectators. Um, and, you know, it is quick, it is fast, it's something that, that you know, it keeps, it keeps flowing, you do not have... Action packed, yeah. non-stop. Action packed, non-stop, and that is one of the keys of, um, of, of the relay event. 
Francis says that it will be excitement all the way in the 27th event program. Traditionally, um, the St. David's Catholic Secondary School and the club from St. David's Track Blazers has done very well at the, at the really meet. Um, SAS has done very well, GBSS. Um, most of the schools, you know, they, they, they have, their, they have their, their, the particular events that they excel, that they excel in. Speed Zone, uh, how, how yeah. are they done? The Speed Zone has done well over the years too, as the name suggests, they, they do very well in the shorter distances, like the four by ones, mm. right? So uh, we, can expect, we can expect all the clubs coming out to do, to do very well this year. Director of the National Relay Meeting, Conrad Francis, he said that attractive prizes, catch prizes too, are in store for the winners. Still with athletics, officials are expecting a fantastic season with athletes being hard at training for the competition. Senior athletic coach again, Conrad Francis, says that there has been an upsurge in training activities with athletes showing renewed interest. He's expecting a bumper athletic season. We are seeing more athletes across the country um, training. We have also seen that they have started to train much earlier than before. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's difficult to get athletes to start training in September, but here we have some athletes coming out and started training since July for, mm -hmm. this, for this season, yeah. and that is a plus. So it, it really tells us that, that this year will be a bumper year for track and field in Grenada. Athletic like official there, Conrad Francis. Uh, senior cricket coach in the Department of Sports, Raphael Crony, is expecting a good showing from uh, Presentation Brothers College PBC in the final of the National Secondary School's Independence on the 15th competition. Crony says that PBC has been pretty impressive, reaching the final, playing unbeaten, winning four matches on their way to the playoff. Uh, it, is the, it is their first cricket finals in three decades. PBC, I think that they have come a long way and we have to give, you know, we gave Masters a lot of credit, Patrick and so forth, who has worked with the team. We at the Ministry have done some work with also the school and we are beginning to see the fruit. Uh, they have some young players um, who have been doing pretty well and um, I would expect that they're going to put up a good performance. PBC will meet St. David's Catholic Secondary School SDCSS in the final next week, Thursday. SDCSS defeated McMahon College in the other semi final game on Thursday at last just playing field by seven wickets. As in Noel grabbed five for 18 in five overs, as McMahon College were disrupted for just 58 in 19.4 overs. Kadim Gadari scored 30 not out. There were also two weeks apiece for Leon Hazard and Gion Noel. SDCSS Jen coached the victory, reaching 60 for 3 in 13.5 overs. Ryan John scored 18 not out. Meantime, Crony sees plenty of talent coming out of the National Secondary School's Independence on a 15 grade competition. The former Grenada opening batsman says that there has been some good performances. Most of the schools have been batting, batting 25 overs, 29, 30, 35 overs. Schools like, um, like the SAS, they would have yeah, almost all again bat 35 overs. Um, St. David's got a secondary, batting long periods of time. Even um, um, McDonald College, they seem to be batting for very, very long periods of time. Um, Shaper, St. Rose, right. they have been batting, they have been right. batting. Right. He says that uh, there have been some good performances, individual performances from the players. I think all the clubs that they caught on to it very well, and, and um, everybody went for it in terms of, of the encouragement, development, uh, getting people involved in, in cricket only. And um, I think there was tremendous support in terms of a competition like that. I think that uh, we are trying to turn the page in terms of cricket in St. George's because. And we are seeing tremendous interest when you look at Tantin and look at the amount of things that is practicing. We have found that even a lot of players have come from, from other parishes. Mm -hmm. Just to be involved in that evening tournament, and right. we think it's a good start, where we can kick off in terms of, of preparing for what would be a two-day tournament and a one-day tournament. Crony there again, speaking of the uh, mode and the plans to revive uh, cricket in St. George's, starting with the uh, St. Walter St. John 
2020 competition that's in progress at this time. He says that the name of the tournament is most fitting. I think it was fitting uh, when the idea came up that it be named um, the Walter St. John um, 2020 Midweek Tournament. As you rightly said, uh, Walter has been the person responsible for all of us. All of us. And, and the amount of work, the amount of work <laughs> that he right, has all done. All of us, that's right. <laughs> the amount of work that he has done in the era of cricket, um, I think really there need to be yeah, and that, a that, lot that's more. That's only a token. Yeah, there yeah, need to yeah. be a lot more done. More appreciation. In his name. Yeah. And I think, again, that was gladly received. You went to see him yesterday. What was your response? Then? Well, we, we, we had a very nice <laughs> meeting with him yesterday. And you, and you know, as usual, when you go by Walter, it's not very easy to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had yeah, a tremendous yeah. time with him. Um, he's, he has, he's very happy. And certainly, he has given the St. George League the full support mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, of what we are trying to do. That's, uh, again, Rafael Crony, a senior cricket coach. In the Department of Sports, he's also a member of the St. George's Cricket Council. The Walter St. John Cricket Tournament continues this coming weekend. The President's Cup will be played out this weekend at Progress Park in Big Parish in Andrew. The new event, put on by the new executive of the Grenada Cricket Association, features a 2020 competition among the top three parishes from the just-ended National 2020 competition and the Sister Isle of Karakou. The parishes are the Champions, St. Andrew, St. Patrick Group in the second, and St. George's. The event will be held over two days, Saturday and Sunday, with the two games a day, the first from 10 o'clock in the morning and the other from 2 in the afternoon. St. Andrew and Karakou meet in the opening game on Saturday, while St. George and St. Patrick clash in the other. The losers meet in the third place playoff on Sunday in the first game from 10 o'clock in the morning, while the winners contest the final from 2 in the afternoon. Still with cricket, the regional four-day tournament continues this weekend with another three matches. Games have been played over four days from Friday. Jamaica and Barbados meet at Sabina Park, combine colleges and campuses, CCC, and the Leeward Islands clash at the three W's Oval in Bridgetown, Barbados, while the Winner Islands host Guyana at the Windsor Park in Dominica. There were wins for Jamaica, Trinidad, Tobago and Guyana in the opening round of matches last weekend. Jamaica beat the Winner Islands by 71 runs, Trinidad, Tobago defeated CCC by 176 runs, and Guyana crushed the Winner Islands by 234 runs. The top players that weekend included Chris Gale, who scored 165, Devin Smith, who struck 103, Sunil Narayan, who took 13 wickets, Devisha and Devinja Bishu, who captured eight wickets. Liam Sebastian also captured five wickets, bowling for the uh, Winner Islands. Uh, finally, the 2012 Wester Hall Estate Limited Overs, that should be the, West, the uh, 2012 Wester Hall Estate Limited St. David's two day cricket tournament starts this coming weekend with five matches. Uh, they were played from 1 o'clock on Saturday and 12 noon on Sunday. St. Paul's Sport Club and uh, Petmota meet at Good Hope. Latouche Interior, Grand Bacolet and Windsor Forest clash at the Laura Payne Field, while defending champions Wester Hall Sports Club meets uh, Corinth United at Wester Hall. In the other matches, uh, St. David's Catholic Secondary School, SDCSS and Rukane clash at La Sages, while combined forces take on Latant at Malmont. Uh, a 2020 competition and the 35 overs tournament are also part of the 2012 uh, Wester Hall Estates in David's uh, cricket season. That's sports. I'm Trevor Thwaites. Bad weather bring back flashes of the past? Does depression and feelings of hopelessness make you want to give up on life? Does uncontrollable anger, frustration and stress push you to commit violent crimes? It's okay to be scared. You're not losing your mind. Suicide is such a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Once you go down that road, there's no turning back. When tempers flare, think twice walk away let's all get involved talk to someone today about the way you feel 
call the Legal Aid and Counseling Clinic or the Ministry of Social Services. A message from the Wellness Committee. Start your morning with the Government Information Service. Tune in to GIS Spice Morning, Mondays through Fridays, starting 6.45 a.m. Spice up and brighten your morning with an informative television show with guests from a broad cross-section of society. You too can be a part of our Spice Morning. Call us at 440-2061 or email gisgrenada at yahoo.com. GIS TV Channel 12, your best choice for educational and entertaining television. Thank you very much Trevor Twaits for the developments in the world of sports. The National Water and Sewage Authority, NOASA, wishes to advise consumers in Marion, Confer, Mount Egmont and Calavini in St. George that their water supply will be interrupted on Friday, February 10th between the hours of 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in order to facilitate maintenance in Chemin Valley. Consumers are encouraged to collect and store water in clean, covered containers prior to the interruption. The authority apologizes for any inconvenience likely to be caused. Nawasa committed to meeting customers' needs. And now for a recap of the headlines. Airports Authority Chairman confirms major airlines have begun paying into an escrow account for Taiwan. Beacon Insurance Company boasts of assets in excess of $370 million. And OECS Tourism Ministers discuss solutions to aviation challenges in the region. On behalf of the entire news team, I am Betty and Lazarus. Thanks for joining us. watching the Government Information Service Channels 12 and 22.